in 2001 from logging, uh, protected for its um, outstanding wilderness values and its outstanding geological values. Which apparently the best way to protect them is to ship them off to based on two of the 12 scans that run horizontal through there all the way back to here. So potentially they could be putting, once the processing plant there is it's pit after pit after pit all the way through here. And remember from Mount Cleveland, we looked at it the lookout yesterday. So 50 kilometres from here north to Mount Cleveland is all in that, that scan body of the area that that's known to. So you get the processing plant here and from here to there is, is you know, a series of open cut pits. So that's yeah. we've gone to the stage of Some of the scan bodies drop further up because I've had the helicopter and the magnetics are you know, indicating it will be a larger resource than the This will be a kilometre and a half long, 220 metre deep mine. It's all venture? Yeah, yeah this, end, this end of it's all venture. Um, there's some bits further down that have been taken up by exploration licence by Yunnan Tin. It's the world's largest tin producer in China. So we're sort of keeping an eye on them. They, they haven't done a lot serious yet. BBC documentation, they're saying they want about these the operational by the end of 2014. Um, in the current case we've got where we're arguing the cumulative impact, they're producing material saying, oh no, none of the mines will operate concurrently, so it'll be two years of one, then two years of another, then the next one. So the materials contradict each other, they tell one, the state government one thing and then the federal government another thing, and we suspect it's all about getting in while the tin price is high, so as soon as they can get a permit, two reserve categories in Tasmania that prohibit mining, that's a national park or a nature reserve, and nature reserve also prohibits tourism, so uh, national parks will be dangerous, but yeah, your conservation areas, your regional reserves, your state forest reserves, they all allow for mining, so they're, they're sort of not real reserves. And now we look at what's happening in you know, New South Wales and you know, that Queensland where they're, they're sort of starting to roll them. Mind you change the hydrology of the area. So that, that's a major um, the, the, the impact on the devil is probably the one that most people are aware of and connect with. The, the impact of the actual mine development itself isn't the big one for the devil. Um, the impact on the devil is the roadkill. And so you, you put, you've got 200 workers at a mine, then that's you know, 200 people trapped in that road, um, and it's all of the, the, the ore transport. The Riley Creek one alone, which is only a small, the smallest of their projects, is going to have 148 truck movements a day, 24-7. Um, 
so it's, um, it's a huge impact on the road kill. Hamish McCallum, who's based at Griffiths University at the moment, he was the head of the um, Tasmanian Devil, Save the Devil Task Force. Um, he's a very witness in the um, case we've got in, uh, later on this month. His view is that it'll either be local extinction or you know, a depletion in the, the number of devils in the area to such a point where they can't you know, maintain a viable population. So, so it's pretty well, yeah. And this is the Tarkin being the last disease free area. And so you know, while we're hoping we can you know, keep the disease out of it, we should have to do another way to just put it. But it's also spotted the well. Traffic tends to run during the day. Okay? You want to be in a restaurant at your hotel before it gets dark. So, water courses through here, the river's there. Um, on Mount Lindsay alone, and that's their biggest so far, there's I think it was 42 water courses going down to the smallest of streams that will be disrupted by that mine. A lot of um, smaller tributaries and stuff are just getting you know, diverted and rerouted around tailings dams and the rest. The whole hydrology, far from the back here, great big hole. Water drains into the groundwater flows and just the change. It's the actual damage to the streams themselves. At the Nelson Bay River site, right up at the northern end of the Tarkine, um, one of the issues they had there was with some threatened orchid species, including a couple of critically endangered. And the best is a 225 metre deep, one kilometre long. And, and the experts that we presented said, you, um, if you do that, you change the hydrology, the mycorrhizae, fungus distributions in the soil change, and therefore the symbiotic relationship they have with the orchids, I mean, the orchids might not exist. And the company put forward their own expert that said digging a 225 metre deep hole a kilometre long shouldn't have an effect on the hydrology. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll, actually, it'll actually sit 70 metres below the level of the Nelson Bay River oh. and below sea level, but he didn't think it would change the hydrology. With, with the tailings dams that you showed us, yes. um, would that be the same sort of after operation procedure? That, or? That's what I'd expect. Because if you look at the slope of this, you should be able to establish a lake on the slope of that now. So it has to be finished in the lake having it. So you get a little bit of an overview. It's a bunch of people that are going to be top of the street. What I was going to say, are you putting that forward in your case to say that, look, you can't even manage over here in the wiener? Yeah. How are you supposed to manage? Related with that for a couple of hundred years. Um, effectively, what happens is most of your, um, your, your metallic ores, particularly in Tasmania, most of the iron ore, all of the zinc, the copper, the, the tin, uh, exist in a sulphide ore. And so when you expose the sulphides to uh, oxygen and water, you get sulfuric acid. And so in removing the metals from it, you first end up with your waste rock, which has got some level of sulphides in it, goes on a waste rock dump and it produces acid and does horrible things. But the big problems you're carrying 
that's where your concentration of your sulphides are. So once they've put you through a processing plant and removed the metal from it, you're left with all this um, you know, sulphide material that you need to do something with, and you need to do something that prevents it from oxidising and forming the acids. So generally what happens is they'll put them in an underground, or an underwater um, tailing stand, so they'll put them under about six metres of water in an artificial Sorry. lake and try and restrict the amount of oxygen getting to it. You can't restrict the water in that environment, of course, but you try and stop the oxygen. It doesn't work very well because you can't, just having water in contact with the air and rainfall and all those things, <coughs> wind on the surface will always churn it up and put some oxygen in. So you get, you don't stop the acids producing, but you reduce it by doing that. The other method they can use is, um, is you can actually cover it all with a clay capping and try and restrict the oxygen getting in and clay in that clay cap. And that's what they chose to do on this side. Again, it doesn't work because um, you have to be sure. The tailings will continue to produce acid for at least 400 years. And so you, you actually need to be sure that nothing's going to breach that clay capping for 400 years. And this scenario is actually the worst possible thing in that they planted silver wattle over the whole lot. Because in their mind, to rehabilitate the site, they had to satisfy the public that trees were growing on it. It was just like the rainforest it used to be. And as you can see, this compared to Philosopher Falls, it isn't what it used to be. But, <coughs> but the, the silver wattle is a very fast growing tree, so it grows in, the roots bust open the clay capping and actually expose it to the, the thing you're trying to restrict. And then they die at a fairly young age and turn over and the root ball rips up the rest of the clay capping. And so we'll walk about 10 minutes in and we'll show you the effect of the, where it hits the river of the failure of the tailing stamps um, and the mitigation process. Yeah, I wouldn't live there, but <laughs> sort of wandering in and out will be fine. You might feel a bit, you know, you haven't smelled sulphur in a while, it's not the nicest. But on a hot day it's much worse, today it's not too bad. I had a crew in yesterday, so you could smell it but it didn't make you want to vomit, which is always a plus. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, we'll wander in and have a look. This is my party trick. Whoa. Um, you just thought it's completely, it's just a suspension until so you look. It's just, uh, it's just all yeah, really oh, fine yeah. particular. What's that, the way the water's flowing that? You see the bubbles? That's sulfur dioxide bubbling out of where the rock went. Oh. Oh. Wait, so. So the tailings Sorry. dump is, is what we're on, yeah? Yeah, we're on the wall of the tailings dump. So okay. this area is the up and down, this like circle of. No, no, this is the tailings there. That's not meant to be there. So by dam, you mean that's just like a dump? Well, yeah. it used to be the dam. Well, it would be a dam, and initially they, they put it under water, and then they've, they've taken the water off and capped it. It's just gravel line. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of the tailings. Crushed rock, um, the, the stuff that you didn't have the metal in and out of the, um, the byproduct of the mining. So, so, uh, and so there hasn't been any follow up remediation work? Just no, this, this company doesn't exist anymore. They got their bond back, they went off to other things. <laughs> Sold the company, got bought out a few more times along yeah, the way. And... They shouldn't have got their bond back. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the acid's coming, flowing into this sludge, going in at a pH of 2. So um, don't fall in. <laughs> well, we don't know. You can put a stick in. Yeah, we put a stick about a metre and a half in as far as I could reach and ran out of stick. So it's still sloping, like the, I expect in the middle it could be four or five metres deep. Okay. I mean, you've probably got some residual tin and, and copper. But the, in the, the ore, the stuff, the tin, you've got copper. But, but the stuff that's causing the problem here is the, the iron particulate. Ironically, out of tin, tailings pop. Um, but yeah, you wouldn't drink it, you wouldn't swim in it. <laughs> so it's, the water's getting in through the top where it's all breached and it's forming acids in behind us and it seeps out through the, the face of the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well there's three of these along. Oh. Yeah, this is number two. Yep. Um, there's another one back that way and another one this way. This is just the easiest one to get to. Um, the iron particular is actually coated with an orange stain from about six kilometres of river. It's completely devoid of aquatic life because the fine particulate is clogging up. You know, the respiratory systems of anything in the water. So um, the iron particular is actually worse. It's a problem than the acid. Yeah, let's move on so everyone can hear. Um, this guy that interests, has there been like 
testing on the area to actually see like the effect on like what would normally like the fish that would normally be here and like the trees well, that would be very little. Split. There's what there is at the moment is there's a there's a proposal on this site by a company called Bright Phase Resources to to come back in and uh, it, it's one that we're actually going to support. It's there's a there are a group of environmental engineers who formed a company. They've worked around mine sites and seen some of the ugly stuff. And what they've, they've so they've got a bit of a background in the mining stuff as well. But they've they've come in and said that six, on the test, 60% of the tin still remains in the tailings. So for any given tin price, that's the level you'll process to. So the the, the higher the grade you're getting out, you know, you, cheap stuff's easy. And then the further you process it, the more you'll get out. But you don't get the margin out. At the current tin price, it's actually viable to come back in and, and reprocess some of that tin tailing to remove a higher level of tin out of it. Now in doing so, they remove the tailings from these tailings dams and they'll have to put them into a new one and they, they believe they can, you know, this was done so badly that they can improve on it. They're, they're quite open about the fact that they don't fix this. This, um, they'll slow, down, slow it down, they'll reduce the level of it, but they can't undo it and they won't stop it continuing to happen at some level, but it will be less than it is now. And so on that basis, we've said 200 jobs on an existing degraded site with the potential to stop you know, a fair amount of this, we'll back them, you know. You know we can't not back them on, the, on that sort of stuff. And so on this site, we're, we're, um, we'd be quite happy for them to come in and, and do that work and for 10 years, there'll be 200 jobs and it should be a good news story. But um, the guys that were responsible for this, so the chief engineer who designed the rehabilitation so-called rehabilitation plan and the guy who was the mine manager at the time of closure <coughs> have both been appointed by Venture Minerals for their one and a half kilometre long open cut tin mine at Mount Lindsay. So the team who brought you Lorena are now giving a been given a site 20 times as big. Um, and and those guys still rave about how good Lorena is and <sighs> the Tasmanian industry still runs around and says Lawina's wonderful. You can drive past it and never know it was there. It's got trees all over it. I'm pretty sure some old guy was trying to tell us that yesterday. Yeah. And he yeah. said, was. you should go down and have a look. Yep. Yeah. Well, tell him you did. You should go down. So there's a, a little place through here where you can walk to where it enters the river. And so if people want to follow me through and, and have a look at where it goes into the river, it's fairly you know, shocking and dramatic. Or if you're happy to sit here and... Enjoy the sulphur. <laughs> they used to actually get you to breathe in sulphur for a head cold back you know, before science really determined medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a head cold, so I'll try it out. <laughs>